Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, Ollie is back from his holiday. We've got two new products from Wahoo, a new bike from Ridley, as well as, of course, comments of the week and the bike roll. Yeah, and our main talking point this week is, do you need to be an aero rider to justify having an aero bike? Did you just do a weird accent then? I don't know, did I? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, let's just go straight to it. So this week we're discussing, can you justify having an aero bike if you're not an aero rider? Because what got us thinking about this was a video that we put out last week where Cy got Andrew Feather to ride up a hill on both the lightweight Orbea Orca and the Orbea Orca Aero, which is more aero, but yeah. 1.3 kilograms heavier. Now there are a lot of comments from you guys under this Loads. saying that the aero bike doesn't help Andrew Feather because he's not very aero, because he climbs out the saddle and just, well, he's just not I kind of get that. He's just not very aero. So we've got a few of the comments here. Um, Zweezel66 says, it's kind of funny to give Andrew a heavier aero bike and expect aero benefits when his preferred riding style is out of the saddle. Yeah, we've mm. got another one here saying, uh, exactly, he's not an aero rider, he's always standing from Ryan, Ry USA. <laughs> um, Rob Larson as well saying, I think we need power to compare. Um, and I think we need to compare with someone who climbs seated because climbing out the saddle makes the whole system way less aero. Deep dive, please. Right. We need to investigate this before we go any further, basically. Yes. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I mean, it's a shame that they didn't have the power on the other bike. That's, yeah. Like, that is a slight draw. We, we need, like, we, we, we can't do anything about that. I'll say sorry on size behalf. Yeah, but <laughs> we have been to the wind tunnel yes. recently um, and investigated a few of the things that were in that video. Um, so visited the wind tunnel with our help of our unofficial wind tunnel engineer, the bike tailor. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks to the bike tailor for helping us out once again. If you're after a completely custom made bike, then well, check out um, his website, he's your man. So the first um, thing do we need to do is work out uh, how much difference weight actually makes on a climb in terms of speed. Uh, yes, well, well, we can model that without a wind tunnel. Yeah. Um, so the difference between the two bikes was 1.3 kilograms, and at feather pace on Belmont Hill, the hill in mm. that video, um, which is um, you know just under a mile long, how much difference do you reckon 1.3 kilograms makes? I feel like just in weight, just in weight. Not. You, I feel like you, you. I don't want to say this word gravitate because we're talking about climbing. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there. But I feel like you anticipate for it to be quite a lot. I already know that it's relatively low, but I think lots of people might think in the region of 10 seconds or more. Two seconds. It's literally nothing. That's Two ridiculous. Seconds. But that's before you take in to the effect of the aerodynamics of the bike. Yeah. So um, the Orbea Orca Aero is significantly more aerodynamic, um, but also within that we had aero wheels on it yeah. and the aero frame. So you can potentially separate those two things out. Um, and if you can generally say that, as a rule of thumb, an aero bike is typically going to be in the region of 10% less drag or exhibit 10% less drag yeah. than, than, than a lightweight setup, which, is, that, which is quite a lot. That also depends on what sort of speed you're testing at as well. Yeah, and this is the thing. So often when bike brands talk about wattage savings from various bits of equipment, they do it at 50k an hour or 45k an hour because the wattage savings are more impressive at those speeds than they are at 25k an hour, which is a speed that you know a lot of riders ride at or Andrew Feather and that climbs at. Presumably is specifically why when you went to the wind tunnel, you tested at 25k an hour to try and make it like a bit more close to real world representative. Yeah, so at, at, at 25k an hour, aero matters still significantly. Yeah. Um, now, for those interested, interested, the threshold, if you go below 16 kilometers an hour, then as a rule of thumb, gravity takes over more, and so weight becomes the most significant thing, but aero still does play a part. But aero that, still does count. That's at also looking at a climbing isolation though, isn't it, when we're saying that sort of yeah. marker? So when we, um, we actually looked at the difference in the wind tunnel between using really shallow lightweight wheels mm -hmm. and using um, uh, deeper wheels. Like, like a 60. Yeah, like, like Feather used. Yeah. Um, and that resulted in a 2.4% reduction in total drag using the, the bigger wheels. Okay. Um, and between the actual frames, um, 
we haven't specifically measured the difference between those two frames, but I have measured aero bikes and non-aero bikes against each other in the tunnel before. So it'd be safe to assume you're looking at about 7%, but that's quite a conservative Is difference. that 7%? Um, in terms of seated or standing, is just equipment alone. So that no, that's seven uh, percent of total system drag, rider okay. and bike, but in 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 a seated position. So what happens if you're standing then? Does well, that screw the whole lot up? So in the wind tunnel, we also had a look at the effect of seated and standing positions. Now, if we take the uh, saving of the wheels and the frame, you're roughly looking at about 10% reduction in overall drag. If yep. we apply that to a standing rider doing feather pace on Belmont Hill. It results in a three second saving overall, but once you add the weight penalty on of the aero equipment, it results in just it being one second faster than the lightweight setup, which is remarkably what we actually kind of saw, although the test wasn't super accurate because we didn't get power. So but it turns out science and maths is actually pretty good at working. Yes, yeah, according stuff out. to maths, <laughs> or math if you're American. Now, um, what about if he's seated though? Because we're talking about standing so far. Well, this right? is, seat, so, so this is the biggest saving. Yeah. Um, but there's a, right. So we measured in the wind tunnel the effect of standing and seated, albeit on me. So it's not quite the same as Andrew Feather. We're not the same body shape, but we're, we're pretty, pretty close. Yeah. But as a jet, it gives you information that you can apply as a general rule of thumb, I yeah. think. Um, but it's at 25 kilometers an hour climbing yeah. pace, you're 25% more aero. Just from being seated? Yeah. But like, that's a huge saving. It is, but because you're still, because you're climbing yeah. on Belmont Hill, which is a 7% gradient. It's the slowest piece. You're only looking at that being a five second time saving. Yeah, this is, see this is where But I that's think more it, than the aero bike. It is more than the aero bike, but I think this is how some people start to get confused when we talk about savings and what are the different speeds, because you go 25%, mm. that's massive, like I just did, and then you mm. go, oh, it's actually only like three or five seconds. Yes, um, <laughs> and there's a big caveat to this. So that's assuming that when you're in the seated position, you're producing the same power. Which nearly nobody can do. Yeah, over the course of a, a three minute effort, yeah. most people can put out more power standing and the, the, the difference in watts you're looking at there for that five seconds is around 18 watts. So if you, yeah, I mean, I know with Andrew and his physiology yeah. that he can produce definitely more than 18 watts in his out of the saddle power versus yeah. his seat. He's not very good at seated power. <laughs> but I think um, that's probably the case for most people. Is that most people would easily say, I can do 18 watts more by riding out of the saddle. Yeah, so, you know, if, if that's you, then maybe, yeah, you're better off just riding out of the saddle. Um, That's a good point, If you point, produce actually. more power, yeah. Because, but physiologically, you can train to be better in the saddle. Um, yeah. and, and one of my favourite examples of this is, is Rowan Dennis. Um, very good, like, seated climber. And he actually reckoned that he produced more power when he was in a TT position. Because More that's how power. he trained. That's how he, d he engineered his legs and his training, and he did all you know his track background. He was always in that pursuit position. So I quite literally, practice makes perfect is the answer to that. Yeah. Um, so on a five percent sort of gradient, we're looking at aero trumping it. A seven percent gradient, we look like weight is going to start to come into it, or it's starting to break even. Yeah, I think at, at seven yeah. percent you are breaking even with weight. So the aero bike kind of wins. <laughs> On balance, like but, if you're gonna get one bike, the aero bike wins because y you're breaking even on a seven percent. Yeah, and then on the downhill and the flat, the aero yeah, bike's definitely gonna. <laughs> that's what I was just gonna say. A lot of what we've spoken about so far is climbs in isolation, but it's not very often you do that, is it? I know Andrew Feather does hill climbs, but once you start to account for the fact of you're often riding on descents, riding on the flat, or a climb is only making up a really smaller proportion of your entire duration of your ride, mm. that's when you go, okay, aero does work as an overall system. Yeah. One thing we do need to address, though, is some of the comments saying that you're out of the saddle, uh, you're, you're, you're being way less aero. The bike doesn't change. The, bike, the contribution of the bike remains the same. What does maybe change, and I think some of these comments are valid, Yeah. because if you're out of the saddle, your overall frontal area increases, and I would theorize that while your torso might be the same, you're perhaps showing more thigh. 
Yeah. Presenting more thigh to the wind. Well, and the arms as well. Yeah, and more arms <laughs> to the wind. These are cylinders, these are bad aerodynamically. Yeah. So overall, the bike becomes a slightly smaller percentage of the overall frontal area. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, yeah. But the same can be applied in terms of weight. It's like if you're a smaller rider, the weight of your bike is a larger percentage of your total system mass. Yeah. So taking weight off that is more achievable. Whereas if you're totally. like a 90 kilogram rider, yeah. the weight of your bike really doesn't matter. <laughs> or even if you look at it as a lightweight rider, say someone that's like super light, 50 kilograms, like their body weight is still way bigger contributor to the overall system than the bike. Weight it, is massively like, overrated yeah. on bikes. But, but what about me? I consider myself a slow rider. Aerodynamics doesn't matter for me. But well, it does. Yeah, for two very important reasons. First one of those is you've got to remember you're quite often cycling into a headwind and you've got to take into account the conditions that you're riding for. Now, when um, manufacturers are assessing things in a wind tunnel, they're looking at airspeed specifically. So when they're saying they're testing stuff at 50 kilometers an hour, that could be out in the real world that you're riding at, say, 35 kilometers an hour into a 15 kilometer an hour headwind, and that way you're getting the same airspeed. So therefore, aerodynamics do matter. Yeah, especially that could e you know that could easily be on a slight downhill as well. You don't have yeah. to be pedaling hard to do that. Um, and the other big reason is that, say, if you average you know 20, 25 kilometers an hour for your your epic ride. Yes, the wattage savings that you're experiencing from equipment and clothing or bikes, whatever, is lower than if you were riding at 50 kilometers an hour average. Yeah. However, um, you're out on course longer. So what you find is whenever you model this, the overall time saving is usually this comes out the same for the slower rider as it does for the fast rider. So. Go figure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's actually really interesting though. I have found that um, informative. Hopefully it's helped to get like, people clued up on aero and lightweight as well. I think one thing we can say though is because if you're, if you're a big rider yeah. and you're not you know, 60 kilograms like Andrew Feather, <laughs> yeah. then <clears throat> weight is of the bike is a smaller percentage of your total system mass, then it makes total sense to go for the aero bike. Always. Because although you might say, well, my body's bigger too, but your, your body is, is cubed with respect to the wind, like its volume is bigger, but the frontal area doesn't increase as that cubed function. I'm getting into maths now. But you anyway, are. basically, it's why, it's why ships are really efficient. It's why cargo <laughs> ships are really efficient, because their volume increases and they can store all the cargo, but their frontal area can remain not so big. I'm with you. So the hydrodynamics of a big container ship is why <laughs> it's so cost effective to ship stuff around the world. And that's why you should buy an aero bike. Done, right. That's Do you it. know what's gonna happen though? What? <laughs> People are still gonna love lightweight bikes just as much as they did I know. 10 uh, minutes like, ago. I, I do as well. <laughs> I still really love lightweight bikes. Just for a climbing ice. If it's just for a climbing isolation, lightweight, especially if it's steep. But you can let us know in the comments. Yeah. Um, right, which now means it's time for what I'd normally call hot and spicy tech, but this week I'm calling it hot and stingy tech. Do you know why? No. Two reasons that happened to me last week. One, it was boiling hot. You get stung. Um, twice last week I got stung on the bike. By wasps. A bee and a wasp. A bee and a wasp. So I thought I'd put in two interesting things that helped me out. One, it was boiling hot, so I used Peloton sun cream. Hooked me up at the weekend, right? I was out for hours on the bike. Look at this. No tan lines means that my skin was protected. And also, um, someone that I was out cycling with carries, get this, antihistamine tablets with them on the bike in case you get stung. I would never think to plan that far ahead, would you? My mum would. <laughs> um, the person's not my mum, it was just a guy called Tim. Oh. Cheers, Tim. Uh, last week I did something that I'm not proud of. Oh, God. I watched the Iron Man <laughs> World Championships in Nice. <laughs> anyway, right? Um, the guy that won, Sam Laidlow. Are you he's, okay first? He's pretty good. You're feeling yeah. all right. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. He does like the fastest bike split. Yeah. But I noticed something sneaky about his setup. Go on. He was wearing a Met drone. How do you know that? Because I was looking at it. But I know he's done a lot of wind tunnel testing. He's been to Silverstone like us. Yeah. But why this was interesting is because it didn't say Met on it. He's debadged it, and he's just got his sponsors on it because he's not. He's like not sponsored. 
by it, but he's using it because it's so the, it I reckon appear, cause it's the fastest on him. So it kind of like appears a lot of people have been starting to do more testing, and that sort of shape and model of helmet seems to be fast for lots of people. Well, yeah, well, I mean, in the yeah. in the recent um, eighteen minute time trial video, we pointed this out. There's a yeah. lot of pros who aren't sponsored by Met who are like sneakily using the Met drone without the stickers. Go figure. <laughs> okay. Um, Ridley have got a new bike. I believe it's called the Falcon. Does this mean that the owner of Ridley has a child called Falcon? No, but I'm... I hope it does. I don't, I'm not aware of this, but you have been saying that lots of the different bikes are named after like children and family members. Yeah, like Noah. That's one of his kids. F Noah Fast. <laughs> That's a middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Fast, come here. He's like you, Alex Danger Payton. <laughs> I don't have a middle name. Cool fact. Yeah. Well, some people say it's a boring fact. Um, but... Anyway... Um, we so don't know. We can either confirm or deny if the owner of Ridley has a child called Falcon. I hope he does. Yeah, apparently this has been developed uh, alongside with, with Lotto and it looks like a new all-round race bike. So a little bit aero, a little bit lightweight. We've got that classic like drop seat stage thing like most manufacturers have been doing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, and they just say it splits the difference between the Helium and the Noah Fast. The other child. Yeah, I don't know if Helium, come here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Helium, stop floating away. <laughs> <laughs> we, our jokes are so oh, proud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but apparently um, it's uh, only 110 grams heavier than a helium in the same size medium, uh, 825 grams. And um, yeah, all right. but more aero, more all round. Which is great for climbing, as we've discussed earlier. Yes. <laughs> um, Orbea have two new colourways that we should hopefully be able to show everybody now. Not only to stock colourways to choose from, they've also updated the um, options available in the Mayo customization portal online. I have just designed a custom bike. We'll put it up on screen. Ollie, what do you think of the colours I've chosen? That's all right, that. I think it, what's this green colour called? Uh, Spicy lime. I think that's all right, yeah. You You're like done all right. That. Done all right that. We, well, you know, the benchmark is low because we've got Connor. Connor's unicorn turd and <laughs> Hank's Ronald McDonald machine. So, yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, anyway, if you want to check it out, head over to their website and you can um, customise and make your own. It's actually quite fun. Yeah, yeah. I quite like um, it. Wahoo have got some exciting new launches this week. Two new products there. And launched. we have competitions to win. So, yeah, so if you want to know. Well, if you want to know all of the little intricate details and stuff, I've actually made a first little video, which is out on GCN Tech right now. So you've got the Kicker Move and the Kicker Bike Shift, two new products. The Kicker Move is taking all of the sort of stuff that you've become familiar with from the Kicker Trainers and putting it into a new sort of hardware package that is allowing for forwards, backwards, left and right movement, trying to make indoor training sort of more fun, realistic, and crucially, more comfortable. Um, and then there's also the kicker bike shift, which is trying to take the kicker bike V2 and put it into a slightly more affordable package, I think is, is what they've tried to do. They've moved away from having the ability for the whole bike to shift to replicate climbs. They're using it in the same way as how the resistance works on the kicker. So um, yeah, loads of cool stuff to go through on that. As you've said, we have got a competition running, so if you want to try and win either one of those products, click in the um, link in the description down below, take it to the competition page, read all the terms and conditions, and um, well, you could be on the chance of winning. Well, it's completely free to enter. Yes. There you go. That's the most important thing. And if anyone comments in the comments section trying to take you away to like Telegram or whatever, <laughs> no, they're Don't. baddies. Stay away from the baddies. Yeah. Comments of the week now. Play. <laughs> Play a, just play a rap or something, right? Yeah. Right, I'm still come to terms with getting absolutely ripped by Cy last yeah. week about the brown saddle on my bike. What's that all about? Do you like it? Yeah, it looks cool. Matches the bar tape, it's retro. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, I haven't got brown bar tape on it yet. Oh. Do you know, look, I forgot to order brown bar tape, so I was like, look, the only bar tape we've got is this black cell Italia stuff. We'll get some brown bar tape Brown on, bar tape, honestly, is, is in the basket on my Amazon account, waiting to hit go. Mm. Um, okay, but anyway, other people have some comments to say about it. Donut Endurance, watch this right after the tech show, oh, for the Dream Bike Upgrade, sorry, which was out of the weekend, which was the full build. He says he watched it right after the tech show. Awesome to see how excited Alex is, even after Cy giving him such a hard time about it. Um, yeah. Uh, Andrew McAllister also said, Alex is the GCN sensei of bike projects, even though he's still traumatised by Crankgate. What cranks are you put on it? 
It's <laughs> 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 so, like uh, the my the, special edition Jura Ace. A hundred pound? No, I bought. Yeah. I, I put the cranks on it that I bought to replace the seemingly sort of sore subjects of the hundred pound new Jura Ace cranks from the previous bike build. Mm. Anyway, it's all in the video. Don't worry. All you comes, champagne socialist. It all comes out in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> and then what else have we got? The sixty thousand dollar bike. Yeah, the sixty thousand dollar factor track bike. If you've not seen this video why this bike costs 60 grand is not what you think. Anyway, uh, Mr. Alex Mackey said, I think it should be like rally cars where they had to make and sell a minimum number of frames to get them UCI approval. I think that would be a great way of doing yeah. it. Oh, I love rally homologation specials. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and well, they used to do that with uh, British touring cars back in the day. Yeah. You had to like have a, the British touring cars had to be the cars that were like your dad had. Do you want to know a really cool, um, Loophole, I was careful, I was careful yeah. choice of words there, that the car industry did to get around some of this homologation stuff. Mm. So when the, I presume it's FIA people, went to the factory to visit and they were like, hey, you have to have like 200 cars of this model. Um, the, the manufacturer said, we've got them in different warehouses. So you've got to walk around here, there's 50 of them there, you walk around here, there's 50 there. What, and they used to move them? <laughs> and they just moved around the different sites. They only actually made 20 of each of the, of the car. No way. And they just moved around the factory, and they're like, yep, yeah, thanks for seeing all the cars. See ya. Oh, well, that'd Amazing. be hilarious if, they, if, if a bike brand did that. Yeah. Um, the other thing on that bike uh, video for the $60,000 bike is it's a track bike, right? Yeah. But then people noticed that on the website, you could like buy the track bike apparently, even though there's no place to buy it, but then you could add on for like a surcharge if you wanted <laughs> yeah. a, a, an oversized pulley wheel system from Ceramic Speed and some bottle cages. <laughs> bottle cages. So Stephen Druitt commented on that and a few people commented on that um, saying, yeah, that the oversized pulley wheel system will definitely make the fixed gears much more efficient. <laughs> Yeah, ridiculous. And also, you can't put bottle cages on a track bike because they're not allowed. Because if you get water on the track, it makes it too slippy and people die. <laughs> that escalated. So now it's time for the bike vault anyway, yeah. which is our favourite part of the show. The bike vault bell has been at rest all week. Um, I don't have the most super nice bike to hand from last week, but what we're going to do, we're going to put it up on screen with the username. And because we're generous, we're going to assume it's a super nice, shall we? Do you want to ring it? Cool. Woo. Um, <laughs> next up, we have got a, Island Born. a Cervelo Caledonia from Island Born, yes. I like um, this. That's, I quite like that bike stand. Westwood. Do you reckon Tim Westwood made that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope not because he's been cancelled. But, um, oh, he has been, yeah, yeah. Actually, no, I don't like Tim. No, I don't like him either. Definitely not. Um, it's got a suspension, seat post, and stem on this bike. Yeah, it's intriguing, isn't it? Um, I, I like the, uh, it's got the Windspace Hyper wheels on. They look yeah. they look smart, don't they? Absolute black um, pulley wheel cage. Oh, that's going to trigger some people. Some people are going to be like, absolute black pulley wheel cage. What are we saying? Super nice or nice? I'm going to super nice it. I'm I think it's super, cool. I'm going to super nice it. Nice, practical, got good stuff on it. Um, Mark Gilmore.mg with a Riley Fusion. Oh, this is cool. I actually saw one of these bikes fairly recently, mm -hmm. and it's a new, some sort of new process of how they've made the titanium frames. And it's got um, like hydroformed joins and lugs or welds it's or something, a, but it's really it's, smooth. Also, he's got one of those bottles. Um, I forget who makes them, where they clip on and off, so you don't have a cage. A few different brands. I think Fidlock yeah. might be one. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I mean, that to me is a super nice bike, but the fact that he's cropped off the wheels. Oh. And it, what is this, amateur hour? Yeah, and, it, and it's in the <laughs> middle of the cassette, which I think is allowed on a yeah. one-by bike. We've said that before. Yeah, we have said one, that. So, but the, I think the fact that he's cropped off the wheels means... But because the frame looks so cool, could we let it slide through? We can't let the floodgates open. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, the Sonner Ranson has a bike called Dotty. Dotty. It's a co-motion robusta. It's a tandem. Dotty. <laughs> I, c I can see why it's called Dotty now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's a nice. It's a nice. It could yeah. be a super nice. Let's be clear. That could be a super nice. Rim brake at the front, disc brake at Monster the back. Monster disc brake at the back. Big boy. 
Um, uh, okay, next one in is BPRVG92H82 with the Trek Madone SLR6 from 2022. Oh, it's very, is it, this is a very small sized bike, yeah? Tiny. Yeah, it's like Richie tiny. Ports. <laughs> um, I like it. Everything is kind of ticking the box. I think we can super nice that one. Yeah, it's a shame it's lent up against the wall. I hope they've not scratched the shifter. And it's got a little mud nah, guard. That'll I'll be all right. That'll be all right. Fake grass. Yeah. We assuming it's fake grass. Yeah, that's right. fake grass. Um, yeah. Super nice. Who's Eight next? ball two six four four. Apparently, they saved this bike from the trash. <laughs> also known as rubbish. And it's a Panasonic DX two thousand. Oh, sounds I love it. Like a digital camera. <laughs> but no, <laughs> it's a bike. Um, I like it. This geometry is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a, that is, that's minimum sleep, seat post, isn't it? Yeah. Do you reckon they've even got any seat post in the frame? <laughs> <laughs> that is a, is a, I really like this. I've got to say, I, I want to super nice it. It's retro. It's been restored. Someone's put their, like... Good, clean background. Heart and soul into it. Yeah. Let's, it's saved from the trash, and it's got a gold chain. Fist bump. Super nice. That was the last bike for this oh, week's what? Bike Vault. Oh, no. Good one to end on. Yeah, I like that. Um, thanks for coming back from your holiday. I'm off next week, actually, on holiday. Oh, yeah, where are you going? Um, going south of France, going out to Duez, go a bit of cycling, then carry further down towards sort of Cannes, Nice. Area. Well, remember yeah. to... I've got some homework for you. <laughs> Climb out to Duez, seated and in the saddle. I didn't do my homework when I was still at school. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. I'm excited to go right up out to Duez. Cool fact. So many cool facts in this show. I've driven up and down Alpe d'Huez five times, but never cycled up it. Go figure. Um, on that note, see you later. <laughs> Bye.